My name is Caden. We missed it. Start again. Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. <laughs> I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And we're the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we're trying to match Cubby's enthusiastic energy. How's everybody? <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> Do we need to start over? Yeah. Probably. Maybe we should start over. Maybe we should just leave it. No. You, nobody, you're not okay with this? No. With a bad intro? Well, just let's just continue on. Sometimes the intros don't always work well. Sometimes we get a little fired up, a little crazy before we do an intro. Sometimes I try to get everyone to laugh like right before I hit go. And so everybody's chuckling as this goes. And so today's didn't turn out at all. Cade said, can somebody match my energy? And we're like, yes, let's do it. And then uh, this is where it began. So how are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are doing well. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How was your day yesterday? Uh, good. Eli, what'd you do? Uh, we organized stuff and I did made did uh did fires. Did fires and you were you were cooking up some what? Uh, chicken and dog food. Dog food and chicken and it was really good. How was your fire? Good. Are you getting better with fires? I think so. What is the key to fires, gentlemen? When you have, when you're when you're cooking off grid. What? Wood. 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 Okay, uh, that's air. good. Air, that's all a good thing. Dry wood. Dry wood. There we go. Say the fire itself. <laughs> yeah, the fire itself. Well, is it easier with dry wood, Eli? Absolutely. So, did you do all right yesterday? Yeah. It seemed to take you a long time to get that fire going. Yep. Why? It's not dry wood. <laughs> <laughs> but it's drier than it was the other day. True, but it's not dry. You guys should be getting better at this. I'm telling you, back in Boy Scouts, I was able to bring a a watered down um, pile of nothing to fruition with a flint and a um, steel, and it was amazing. And so I need to get you guys on that same path. Is anyone with me today? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Jade, you busy? No. Working on something over there? No, I have my kids at my feet, so I'm trying oh, to get okay. out of my feet. Kicking some dogs out of your feet. All right, Kate, how you doing? Good. Anything? What did you do yesterday? Uh, I spent the entire day shepherding cows. And how'd that go? Uh, I went all right. I mean, little cows don't like the big cows, so they're a little separated. So trying to find them is a little hard. Right, and when you talk like a little little tiny feller and not into the mic, nobody's going to be able to hear you. All right, Jade, how what did you do yesterday? Uh, just organization, cleaning stuff. Organization, cleaning stuff. All right, good. Nicole, what did you do yesterday? Um, I canned pickles. You canned pickles. Made laundry detergent. Made laundry detergent, homemade laundry detergent. How did you do that? I saw you take a bar of soap and you ground the bar of soap down. How, how do you do it exactly? You grate the bar of soap in warm water, and then you also put in washing suds, and I use... What are washing suds? Um, it's like a soap, but it's it's like the base for soap. So you're just taking soap and putting soap together and making soap? Basically. You're not even making soap? I make a concentrate, Uh huh. and then I make it so that it can be used more than just... And it's organic? Yes. And it's really good? Does it smell good? Yeah. Does it cling well? I put essential oils in it. Does it cling well? I don't know what your clothes clean. Uh, I don't know. I, I wear the same shirt for a long time. My shirt's starting to smell a little foul. But, uh, yeah, we live on the farm, so they're, uh, hygiene. He died, Gene. He dead. So, all right, let's continue on. How are we doing? Everyone, uh, let us get into um, one plug right here. This is for Yahoo and the Torah.net. For anybody that has not seen this, uh, Nicole and I... Um, under, I would say under an hour. Was it about an hour? I think it was less than that. Probably less than an hour. I'm sitting there on my uh, little exercise machine and I had a, uh, an epiphany, I guess, or a thought, or maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Yah sent me a download. I don't know. I wish he would. But um, it was that we needed to take all these laws, statutes, and commands, put them on a website exactly as we do them. Nothing else on the website. We'll never, ever have anything else there. Um, and when we are done with this, we will have it that you can download this in a PDF, you can download it in a Word doc, and you'll also be able to download it in plain text. So when we are done um, with this, which is a very important project, we will actually have a really cool thing here. So we invite everybody up there to Yahoo and the Torah.net, and I guess we begin, and my computer's being funky, my little lap, my little tablet, and we will start with a handy dandy split screen. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate that. A little, that was little, a little, uh, little, little delay. lacking on that gun. Yeah, a little delay. There's not. We were looking for some energy from here, but I guess we're not getting it. Kate started off with the energy, and now everyone's dead. What's going on, Big Ben? Nothing to say? Uh, no, not really. Okay. All right. Let's begin. Numbers 9. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year <laughs> after they were come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, Let the children of Yashrael also keep the Pesach at his appointed time. Oh, yeah. So, are That's you a, a are you a child of Yashrael? Yeah, yeah, this is a command. Yeah, so um, we already have the Pesach commandment, and that this is just go under it. 
Right. And do you want to remember where exactly the Pesach command is? Uh, it is like somewhere near the top. It is, it's before 20, I th- or it's before 25, I think. Remel, remember generations. I'm going to say 16 to 22. 16 to 22, our Berean sister Nicole says. Maybe. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter. Nicole, you're on top of this, right? Yep. I'll All right. It. So there it is. So let's add that into there. So we need to keep the Pesach. And this isn't the very first time. What are some of the things about keeping the, the Pesach? What do, you, what do you need to do when you guys keep that? You need to uh, kill a lamb, cook it. What what do you do uh, other than that? Uh, if you what what qualifies you not? To oh, keep? being clean, you have to be clean. Okay, what else? What also unqualifies you from keeping pestle? Pes- if you're like traveling, if you're not like in your place. And what else? If you're a gentile. Uh, I think. <laughs> well, I mean, so if you're uncircumcised, you cannot keep the Passover. Oh, okay. you guys remember that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, three. In the fourteenth day of this month at evening. Ye shall keep it in his appointed time, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. And Moshe spoke unto the children of Yashrael that they should keep the Pekach. And how do you how do they say it here? It's Pesok. I don't know why there's Pesukah. a Pesukka. Commandment fifteen, by the way. It's commandment fifteen. Oh, you were off one. Uh-huh. Okay. Five. And they kept the Pekach on the fourteenth day of the first month of the evening in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So did the children of Yashrael do. So this is probably the first time outside of their, when they actually went through it. So this is their very first celebration. This should be very fresh in their mind. So this, this should be probably one of the greatest celebrations ever because these people got free. And so they should actually know what this is all about. Unlike us, we just, you know, have a lamb. We, we weren't, we weren't slaves there. So it, it doesn't mean as much there, but it needs to mean a lot to us because we're supposed to keep it for all time. All right. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Pekach on that day. And they came before Moshe and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of Yahuwah in his appointed season among the children of Yashrael? And Moshe said unto them, Stand still. And I will hear what Yahuwah will command concerning you. Isn't that cool? He had like a uh, phone booth, right? He's like, hello, Yah. We have uh, some uh, dead that were touching the living, and we need to figure out what's going on. All right, nine. And well, Yah- be living touching the dead. The oh. dead touching the living. They're both touching. It's not <laughs> yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter which way the, it goes around. It's the act of touching the dead. <laughs> it doesn't matter who touches who. Dead has been touched. Yeah, the dead has been touched. All right. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Pekach unto Yahuwah. The fourteenth day of the second month at even they shall keep it and eat it with matzah and bitter herbs. Okay, so what do we? What did it just say here? So he said if you're unclean, if you are touch a dead body, then you cannot celebrate Passover on the time that it caused you to be unclean before the sight of Yah. Then you can celebrate it on the second and, month. They it gives you basically a second chance. When to, is when is Pesach the very first? Uh, first uh, first month of the fourteenth day. Okay, so, so now we're dealing the second month of the fourteenth day as well. Okay, right. So we'd be thirty days later or whatever. That, yeah, so what happens if you're unclean on the second month as well? How do you end up being unclean that time too? Um, you would probably strive not to be if you had already missed the very first one. You'd probably not want to. I mean, I'm sure there were situations where that occurred. But, um, you know, it would probably be rare. These, these guys, see, that's the thing, is these guys were concerned that they were not able to sacrifice, right? And they're like, hey, you know, don't leave us out. We don't want to be left out. And so, yeah, you don't want to be the only dude not doing this when you are um, doing it. So, Nicole, did you get that in there? Yep. Okay, so if you're on cling, then you added that in there? Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, the 14th day of the second month at even, they shall keep it and eat it with matzah and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break any bone of it, according to all the ordinance of the Pekach. They shall keep it. So it's same same conditions, right? Same same kind of a mm. thing. But the man that is cling and is not in a journey and forbears to keep the Pekach, even the same shul, soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he brought not the offering of Yahuwah in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. So if you are, uh, if you are clean, if you're not traveling, if you are... 
where you're at, if you're in your home and you're not celebrating Passover, he says you're going to get cursed. He says you're going to bear your sin. I'm going to cut you off from people. And I assume cutting off from people is just a huge curse. Uh, you, cutting off from the people, being cut off from the hand of Yah, imagine that, right? I mean, that's essentially what hell is, right? If you're going to hell, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in burning and brimstone and things of that nature. The bottom line is you are cut off from the existence of our creator and he is no longer, he no, doesn't look at you like he used to look at you, right? I mean, he looks at us with mercy, with love, with, um, you know, he, he's patient. He's trying to get us all where we need to go. And um, when, we, when we voluntarily don't do what we should do, it's, it's obviously not a good deal. All right. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you, and will keep the Pekach until Yahuwah, according to the ordinance of the Pekach, and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. He shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. Okay, so what do we say here? Uh, when, if there's a person that wants to keep it, that is a stranger that was not born of Yashorel, but wants to keep Pesach, he is allowed to keep Pesach, he can do the same as the Israelites are doing. Right, only if he's And I feel like that should be a command as well, uh, where he says, you can, where he says that's a, a law stranger? for both. He says at the bottom, he goes, you have one law for both the stranger and the native land. Or in the native of the land, yes, which that. should be uh, under the, uh, there's one Torah for everyone. Right, okay, right. You shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. Okay, yeah, so that would go under at least for that one, Nicole. You with us? Yep. All right, she's doing her handy dandy, working. All right, um, 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared, up the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at evening there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. Oh, that's cool. So, uh... A nightlight. Yeah, nightlight. But, I mean, you imagine that? I mean, the fire of Yah, I mean, it would just be... It would be awe, awe-inspiring. All right, so it was. The cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the children... Uh, then after that, the children of Yashrael journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Yashrael pitched their tents. At the commandment of Yahuwah, the children of Yashrael journeyed, and at the commandment of Yahuwah, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Yashrael did guard the watch of Yahuwah and journeyed not. All right. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days up on the tabernacle, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of Yahuwah, they journeyed. All right, well, they, they know. I mean, that's amazing having Yah sit there and dwell with you. And so it was, when the cloud abode from evening until morning, unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month, or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Yashrael abode in their tents and journeyed not, but when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of Yahuwah, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of Yahuwah, they journeyed. They guarded the watch of Yahuwah at the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. All right. Anyone have anything? Uh, that would be a really amazing thing to uh, have, like, the esteem of Yahuwah in the form of a cloud to sit over you so you know... Well, if you're going to stay here, you're going to abide with you. Yahuwah is going to dwell with you in a form of a cloud, of course, and then and fire at night. That's just a it's kind of a spectacular thing. And I don't know if the Israelites knew how like important, how cool that was at that time, but that just sounds like a very amazing thing to have like uh, Yah guide you on a little trip to the Promised Land. Yeah, I, I sometimes wonder if we would do any better than what they did. I mean, would we, you know, they, they literally had the hand of Yah working with them lighting their way both day and night and showing them the way. I mean, it's not, they didn't have to think. They didn't have to plan their 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 day-to-day -day stuff. All they had to do was look out and see if there was a cloud there or, or what, what, do they move today or do they not move today? And so I guess that would be the first thing that they did every single day, right? They would look out their tent and see if, what is the cloud still on there or is the fire on there or what what's on there? Has it moved or has it not? And so... Um, you know, I, when you say like, a, how would we do any better? It reminds me of like when Yehosh was talking to the disciple, he says... Blessed are those who have uh, not seen and still believe. When the, because the disciples were uh, faithless, they had said seen things, but they still didn't believe. Yeah, you know, I, I often wonder about that on on various days as well. Um, you know, is is our faith is it good enough? Is a faith good enough to where we are? I mean, I without a shadow of a doubt, I know, and I I can almost feel, 
Yah's presence. You know, I talk to him constantly. Um, I don't hear anything back. I'm, I, unfortunately, I, I don't get it's not a two way download. Um, I'm sure I, I, others hear it. And I mean, others supposedly speak in tongues and this kind of stuff. I haven't heard that. Um, have you guys heard me speaking in tongues? Uh, no. no I Maybe don't. when I get mad, it sounds like I'm speaking in tongues. It just sounds English. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I guess that is. I guess it's amazing. Our, our creator gave us a plan. He gave us a plan all the way to where we are right now. And I, at the end times, I would envision that every single one of us should be very, very familiar with how they moved, right? If all of a sudden we see a cloud come out or something of the sort or some of the same stuff happen again... It's time to start following that cloud, right? I right. mean, if the and, clouds there, we stay. If and gone, that, we that is yet another command: is obey the the hand of the messenger that comes. I mean, and I guess that would be how would you know if it's a messenger of Yah or it's a, the Hasatan's messenger, right? Because it, it they could form the same stuff and they could trick it, and so um, there's a spiritual battle that we absolutely have to understand and we have to get through all of this stuff because it's not it's not about what we can see; it's about what we can't see that is all around us and it's the stuff we can't see that will affect everything in our lives everything and um, I think as we get closer to Yah we will feel his fibers we will feel his his presence we will feel the Ruach of whatever spirits he is willing to deliver to us and um, I'm, I'm excited for these end times I'm excited you know as the world is burning into shreds there's nothing left of it um there has to be a Messiah or there has to be a hand of God, Yah, that is going to save all the people. And there's just too many of us in too many different places. There's, there's, it's all over. We're all over the world. We know people all over the world from this channel. And, um, I, I, you know, there's a second Exodus coming. And in that second Exodus, I mean, we may be traveling the same way these guys travel. That's why Sukkot is also very important that we are able to not just practice dwelling in tents but when we have an exodus we got to sleep somewhere right uh, you know and so we are going to go somewhere and hopefully we're going to be walking across uh you know oceans of of fire and ice that we can walk across and it's going to be having the faith like peter's faith are we able to uh walk on water with messiah yahushua or are we going to start dropping when we get scared of, of the the waves and the turmoil so our faith must be huge we must have absolute faith in all of this i like i said i without a shadow of a doubt have I, I wouldn't know how to go through life without knowing that there is a creator and somebody who loves us, who has a plan for us, and somebody who is qualified that we we follow, right? That you don't want a boss who's like Hasatan, right? The guy is just filthy. He's disgusting. He, he wants nothing but disgusting worlds for us and, and terrible things. And our creator is 100% different. He wants us to have holiness and righteousness and cleanliness and, and all of the good stuff that should come with life. So, all right. Um, I think that's it. I think everybody, uh, you have anything else? Anyone? Read your Bibles. Read Much your love up. to you guys. Big family out there. I didn't say hello to you guys, but to everybody out there, hopefully you're still with us. Um, much love to you. Big hugs. Um, high fives. You know, I cannot wait till we can see each other in the kingdom to come. We really value you guys out there as our family and, and really the comments that come in. Um, it changes our life. It changes the dynamic. It changes these lessons because we go over them and um, we just we can't thank you guys enough for being a part of this family. So, anyone else? That's uh, uh, read your Bible. Uh, shalom. Read your Bible. So we start off with real high energy, and it's kind of like just a real somber one today. <laughs> so, so much for that. Don't say we're gonna start off high energy again, Kate. That, 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 <laughs> yeah, we're, we, and we'll start off real. We'll start off real serious. Let's <laughs> get real somber and serious. Maybe we can find something to laugh about later. All right. All right. Much love, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.